Well, here's the example, and um, the question is, uh, we've got a class down here at the bottom of the hierarchy, and uh, it's not abstract, so um, which methods do we have to supply code for? That's really the question. So let's start at the top and have a look at what we've got. Um, for the start, there's an interface I1 down here, and it's got uh, two methods in it. Uh, one of them actually takes uh, uh, type I1, so you can have to do that, of course, no problem. And um, here, uh, just to prove a point, we've got an interface I2, and I've marked it as abstract, and I marked the method in it as abstract as well. Uh, you don't have to do that, it's completely redundant because they're implicitly abstract. Uh, so you could drop off either or both of those. And Sun recommends you don't put abstract in. Uh, you could also put public in there because it's implicitly public. Methods in interfaces are public as well. Uh, so you could put the word public in there and you don't have to again. Uh, you can't put public in there though because that's different. Interfaces are not necessarily public but the methods in them are. Um, here we got uh, i3 and uh, there's no harm in returning an i3 as well. Taking an i2 even. So there's no, no difficulty with any of this. You can do some things like that. It's not a problem. Uh, here we come to interface i4 and uh, you can extend, uh, just to prove a point, you can extend as many interfaces as you like. Um, uh, well, actually, as long as you don't get a circular definition, that's the only thing you have to avoid. Uh, they never, of course, implement anything. So um, you can't uh, have an implements clause in there. And you can only extend interfaces. Interfaces only extend other interfaces. They never extend classes, of course. So effectively what we've got in here is not just um, that method, but also uh, that one and those two. Those are effectively inherited into here as well because of that extends clause. Right. Um, abstract class C1 I1 and I2. Right, well, we know it's abstract straight away because we've got an abstract method in here. So there's a good reason to make it abstract. Also, um, of course, it doesn't implement everything in I1, only the first uh, method in it. It only does that one, it doesn't do the other one. So there's another good reason to make it abstract. And if you want a third good reason, well, it doesn't implement that either out of I2, so there's another yet another reason to make an abstract. Of course you don't have to implement everything from the interface, I mean, yeah, it's only implementing one of them. Uh, you could of course equally well define some perfectly valid code in there too if you wanted. Because um, it's, it's after all a class. Um, here is uh, another abstract class that uh, doesn't implement anything at all and extends uh, C1 and implements I2. Now um, C1 if you look at it implements I1 and I2 so in fact this implements I2 is redundant. You don't have to put that in because the fact that it extends C1 means that automatically it's going to implement I2 and I1. So that's unnecessary, um, and uh, that's just put in there more or less as a courtesy, I suppose, so that uh, anyone coming along and reading uh, the code doesn't have to go trace all the way up through the hierarchy to work out what it implements. All right, here is uh, the final class C3, that just extends that one and implements I4, that one. So you can see straight away that uh, I1 gets dragged in by I4 and also C2 goes to C1, C1 pulls in I1 again from there. So you can pull things in from two directions, by two paths, that's okay because of course they're exactly the same. 
So what's actually needs to be in here? Well, basically it's the lot apart from I1, M1 because that is um, we got some a concrete uh, method supplied for that, so it doesn't necessarily have to be in there. So it's the lot down here apart from I1, M1, and um, and of course you could put I1, M1 in if you wanted. You could supply code for that. If you did that, of course, it would override the version that's in C1. Or, and in fact, in, in, to be more precise, it would override the version in C2 because C2 inherits it from C1. And uh, that's about it, I think.